Today, we're here with Fujiko Sines. Um, she's a Christian science practitioner and teacher. Um, and we want to thank the First uh, Church of Christ scientist in Brattleboro, Vermont, for making this happen. Uh, Fujiko, uh, their website is uh, csbrattleboro.org. You've got a lecture coming up on the 18th, and I, I've done my research, and it's always funny when I say that to somebody. It, it feels kind of funny. I did my research on you, but but I really did, and you've got an interesting story that I want to get to um, before we start talking about the lecture, because I, I love your story, and I love, and there's a couple of um, questions I had about it, because you're from Japan, and there's yes. a piece of your story that surprises me a little bit, but but right now, do you say that you study relationships between prayer and healing and consciousness, reality, spirituality, well-being, and how that all kind of works together to kind of free ourselves? Is that really what you're studying at this point? Yes, yes. I have always been interested in, well, serving in any way that will bring more peace and harmony, you know, between uh, the people, but also within a community. Uh, even as a child, because I probably, um, you know, being uh, born in Japan, but uh, lived in India oh. for about four years as a child and then being thrown back into my so-called native uh, land and, and not being able to speak the language at that time, oh. I really struggled uh, trying to find my identity. Hmm. And But um, all throughout my um, school years, I watched... Um, I went to Christian school, so I watched the nuns and priests really uh, uh, devoting their lives to some higher power mm -hmm. that they really felt, uh, you know, that they were, they were called to do something. So I was always, you know, waiting to see what was calling me. <laughs> but anyway, at the same time, um, my mother was interested in healing methods other than the Western, uh, you know, uh, medicine. So I, uh, when I fell ill, she asked me to study uh, what you would call Reiki here or mm -hmm. Qi. And, and I have witnessed um, some healings and I always felt that least invasive form of healing is the highest form of healing. And then consciousness had a great deal to do with it. I still didn't understand growing up why these um, healings were taking place at the time. And when I started to practice myself, I felt that it was taxing me, meaning that I was somehow being in the middle of that person and the problem, mm. instead of being in the middle of a higher power and that person not being in the middle in a sense that manipulating it. But what the study of Christian science made me realize is that we are both witnessing some higher power to influence our consciousness, not the brain. I always make sure that consciousness is not brain, but um, because brain only uh, can react to or respond to what they have been fed, fed in. Right. Whereas consciousness is an instant knowing. Right, so you're, you're talking about something that goes beyond just what your physical brain can handle when you talk about consciousness. It, it yes. sounds to me like, because of the way you grew up in those two different cultures, and this is what I was going to ask you, you know, both of those cultures always, uh, from my um, perception of them, really do speak to that spirituality and consciousness in not only their religion, but also in their cultures as well. And so I, when I read about you at 30, in your 30s, discovering um, Christian science, it kind of makes sense, but I also wonder did you ever look at the western medicines for any help because mm -hmm. I, I get i get sense that the cultures kind of shy away from western medicine for good reason but um i'm just curious if you didn't gravitate towards um something that was more spiritual anyway because of how you grew up mm, well i was looking for i wouldn't say spiritual at that point it's just basically non uh a pervasive uh, mm -hmm. adding chemicals sort of right you know, okay. I think it, the if it is if the simplest thing might be if an exercise is going to help i would cho choose that over any medicine sure that, <laughs> that was sense. the way i was grown up i would choose uh, carrot juice over another another type of medicine or surgery if it's if it's possible it's not like i never rely on uh i would never rely on medicine because sure. i really appreciate um uh just the desire to want to help is 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 all in the same 
a line of um, you know the respect that I really have people wanting to help each other, especially that's relieving that's people. Word to use for sure. Yeah, re, re, relieving people of pain. Mm -hmm. You know, nobody wants to be in physical pain. So when I witness um, people being uh, healed of uh, appendicitis or uh, pain through uh, uh, practice of qi or chi. I just knew that it was uh, something that my teacher taught me, which the base was, do you have love? Because he always said, if you're doing this for money, you will lose the power to heal. It and really speaks to volumes because if people have love in their hearts, that's how you can heal yourself is basically what you're trying to say too, right? Yeah, in, in Japanese, uh, the treatment where uh, any kind of sense of cure, uh, we call it oteate, meaning ha putting the hand on. And then we know that if someone uh, uh, um, kind of evokes this anger or resentment, it's not like you're going to go there and touch someone. Right. You know, if someone looks so dangerously uh, infectious as Jesus touched the lepers, we're not going to get close. But so the base I understood from a childhood was was love. And even mm -hmm. if Japanese culture, we don't really hug people, or you know, we're we're not as physical. Mm -hmm. But I knew that the um, the the less physical we are, the deeper our consciousness or our hearts reaching out to other people person has to be tangibly felt mm. and maybe not by words sometimes you know it that's the part that i was interested in that um the christian science i had i thought had something that uh would not only add for for me to be a healer uh not in the sense that i am healing but i am actually understanding the higher uh the agent of healing for every human being, regardless of religion or not even having God in their life. Um, it's just natural. And I think that's really makes it science because I always say Christian is an adjective. Mm. Science is a noun. That's what we are really teaching. What kind of science, you know, with capital S are we talking about? We're talking about Christian, which is really has to be com with deep compassion as Buddhism would also teach. So I met people who are healing, who are, uh, have different, different discipline, a background, but the base I feel is, is love. What was it about Christian science that you discovered in your 30s? What was that moment that you said, this is it, this is what I've been looking for? Because you said, you said you were looking for something. And I think, especially in your 30s, I think uh, humans go through this period of time where, it, well, what am I supposed to be? Why am I here? And the 30s does kind of fit in with that. What was about Christian science that was that aha moment, that moment you said, this is, I found it. Well, I had actually a physical healing that was, had been diagnosed uh, by a doctor, the heart ailment. Hmm. But I think uh, what made me, every time I saw a child, my daughter's uh, having a chronic um, ear infection, mm -hmm. being healed in 20 minutes uh, in the middle of the night, having, I don't know, 100, close to 100 degree temperature and mm. high fever. And when I, I asked my husband, uh, you know, what, what should we do? Because, you know, he, he wasn't a student of Christian science and I respected his choice. And he said, well, you call that guy, uh, you know, mm -hmm. that you called before to have a release from your your." Um, a tooth problem that you had and the, but he said in 20 minutes because mm. otherwise we're going to the to the doctor you know emergency mm. room but we just both knew that emergency room you just still have to wait so he gave right. me 20 minutes but then while i was speaking to this this person who really reminded me that you know that i'm not really the parent of this child mm. that this god already knows mia is her name Mia as his own likeness and then the harmony is restored already right now, not uh, because I am I'm starting to pray. He even mm. said that, that it's because it's the fact, it's a spiritual fact. Now I went back to the room and my husband and I, my daughter are both asleep and I put my hand on her forehead and it was not hot. And the next day she was starting um, summer uh, dance camp, uh, the two week camp. <sighs> 
And uh, she popped out of the bed, had no after effects of ear infection or nor the fever. Wow. And I had been told by the doctor that this child is going to go through ear infection through um, teenage year because, you know, that's kind of a chronic thing that you carry sure. even sure. as a young adult sometimes. But she never had an ear infection from that, that winter. And I started wow. to think, I'm not a type of person when something happens, I say, okay, I'm on board. I would right. not even buy a book, you know, like a Bible or Science and Health with Key to Scripture, you probably know, written by Mary Baker Eddy. Um, I was really still observing. And I think it is when my sister uh, had the, um, uh, the, the late uh, stage of cancer and um, was given up by a doctor and was in a state of coma hmm. when I was asked to fly over there. And in the airplane, I said to myself, um, God, if uh, I get to see my sister, if I get to um, see that life is really the form that you create, that I will dedicate my life to your the study. And when I arrived, she was awake. She was brushing <sighs> her teeth. She had brain cancer, but she had no pain. She had a coma because of overdose of morphine. Mm. The doctor came and kept coming to try to check why she was speaking, why she had strength in her hands. Wow. Every floor, the head nurse of every floor of that hospital came to see this you know, my sister, well, a patient, but the, was it, a, would you call it a miracle? Yes. But at, at that point, I was thinking that that's really not what I should be calling miracle in a sense right. that it happens only to, if you're lucky. Right. But the interesting thing is that when she uh, saw me, she said, Fujiko, did you pray? And I said, uh, yes, I had, a, I had prayed and I had, my friend also prayed, but I was reading this textbook during my 13 hour flight to Japan from you know, New York, um, nonstop, I didn't sleep. I told her, but she told me that I don't, you know, she told me, but you know, I don't believe in God. <laughs> and then in the next breath, she said, but I'm afraid if there is God, because mm. I've done something really bad. Many times she said, mm. and she, she felt that she felt fell ill because of that what she had done in her life so i turned to her and said um do you know if everyone had who did something wrong had to become uh, ill we don't have enough um, that's right beds. good point <laughs> good point and she started laughing and then that really was a turning point as she said i want to know what kind of god you're talking about that's that's, that's powerful said, that is powerful. And this is what you're talking about on Thursday, right? This is part of your, your lecture about God's eye view of you. And this is parlays really well into that. You've really experienced these things. So I can understand why you'd be so passionate about it. And you're trying to, to open the light for others, uh, correct? That's really what the, the lecture is about, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I think when things like the so-called miracles happen, people would feel like that's a very minor percentage, you know, the, uh, happening in the society. Sure. But more and more doctors have come out and speak up and say, well, we witnessed this, you know, we witnessed that. And I think the more people come together to agree on certain symptoms, uh, the phenomenon, I guess, uh, the more we have consensus to agree. It's like, there's so many things we uh, came to agree uh, either related to age or related to a culture that we accepted. And that's well, what we're breaking. Yeah, you know, Fujiko, I'll tell you, if, right on that subject line, you know, I, I think you're so right, especially in, in I, I never like mixing politics at all. And I'm not trying to mix politics here, but right now in America and in, in the world as well, you know, mm -hmm. COVID-19, the pandemic has really... Um, put our world in some turmoil. I mean, you know, mentally, physically, it's it's a problem. And I think one of the keys to this, and it doesn't matter what side of the fence you are on, in my opinion, about the the, the pandemic or the vaccine or any of that kind of stuff, I, 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 don't, I don't really care what side people are on. I think the point 
should be what, kind of what you just said here. If we all could just agree on those, you know, the symptoms first or whatever it may be and have that, um, that ideal together as one, then we might be able to, to get over this a little bit easier through prayer or, or any other means, right? And that's kind of what you, you're saying there. Yes, yes. You know, for example, um, the Lord's Prayer, as Jesus gave, says, um, give us this day our daily bread. And I used to just say, yeah, give us this day. I have my bread for day. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, you know, it really made me think that if he really meant give us this day, our meaning every single person on this earth a piece of bread mm. a glass of water we have not even achieved that if yeah, the consensus is that if the consensus is that we have enough water we have enough food if we're starting that to say the distribution you know it's it has to be practical it's mm. not just wishing the food will just come out you know fall from out of heaven mm. but it because we have responsibility to think right and that what we agree uh, upon is so crucial in bringing unity. I, I know it sometimes pains me to see the country that I love, mm. you know, the news in, the, in, in Japan about America and I'm thinking, no, <laughs> that's not America that I know. I right. know America that's generous, uh, America that is so, um, open to new ideas, you know, and so I was awakened in the last couple of years thinking like, I need to really pray that this is not what we can, we agree on. I was going to ask you that because usually what the perception that I have from reading uh, from other healers, um, particularly, they have a good sense of empathy or they're very empathic sort of people. I, I get the sense of that. Do you feel that way too? Like, for example, on the plane, when you were praying for your sister, did you have any kind of like physical warmth or any kind of feeling that your healing was working or things were being heard or whatever it may be that that happens? Did you get any sort of physical sense or any sort of yeah, a lot of the time, I'm actually surprised <laughs> that yeah. there's a change because I'm not expecting so much that um, the outcome. The only thing I knew was that when I concentrate my my thinking on the the level that you know the the Bible or especially science and health ask us to be in, I had no sense of time. Mm. I had no sense of fatigue. So there's not even a, like when I travel back and forth, this works even more so. Um, there's no jet lag. I was so just when, I arrived, <laughs> when I arrived, it was like that very moment, the time I get, got on the, the plane in the next second, as if I was there with my sister. That is, that is, a, that's amazing. You know, it really, I'm so looking forward to your lecture Thursday. It's November 18th, seven o'clock. It's actually, uh, we've got some graphics up on the screen here. If you go to csbridalboro.org, uh, you can, uh, is, uh, seven o'clock is when it goes live. So if, as long as you're there by seven o'clock, uh, you can um, you can listen in. So many great um, opportunities out there for people to, to do good. And I think uh, God's eye view of you is gonna be a great start for people. Thank you so much, Fujiko, Thank for being you. part. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. And I'll be watching on Thursday. Yes. Thank you.